Hiya, welcome back. Underneath my uh, Peter Frampton video, someone called Jean-Marc Noali uh, <laughs> asked if we could do Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. And I thought, well, yeah, that's a nice sound. Let's have a bash. But who knew it was so complicated? There's tons of research on the interwebs about how to make this sound. Um, a little Google reveals all. Um, the, uh, people have said that when they were recording, the microphone fell out of its stand, pointed at the floor. They liked the sound. They kept it. When they tried to recreate the sound, they couldn't do it because of the microphone placement. Um, uh, there's lots of information out there. But let's see what Mark Knopfler says about this sound. Uh, obviously, you know, we'd, I had my Marshall there. We, 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 we turned it up to as far as it would go, and we were going for a pretty heavy sound. But I had a wah-wah pedal in it just to give it something different. And so we yeah. got the pedal. And as soon as it was in and set, that was the sound. Yeah. yeah. So according to Mark, it's just a Marshall and a wah-wah. But it's not, is it, Mark? Is it? Let's look at that wah-wah again, shall we? Um, look on the side there, big old knob. So he's got different filters in there. There's a red button or a red light. What's that? There's some LEDs or toggles on top. What do they do? So at some point, Mark has given the uh, wah-wah to his roadie or a friend with a soldering iron and said, come on, why, hey, mate, can you make this sound like I'm in the Delta Blues, man? And his friend has said, of course I can, Mark. And uh, now we've got Mark's wah-wah to deal with. So the sound is probably good microphone placement in the studio. Mark's crazy wah-wah, talented fingers, great riff. So that's our mission for today. I say today, I've been working on this for weeks, weeks and weeks. It's been driving me mad. Um, so let's listen to the original riff and see what we can hear. Right. I agree with Mark. There's a wah wah there. Oh, look at me being generous. I agree with you, Mark. You are correct. Um, there is a, a cocked wah in there. There is probably a Marshall. Um, but it's a very peaky sound, very, very scooped and peaky. It's low, it's high, it's, it's, it's everything, but it's also awful. And that's what's so brilliant about it. It's lo fi, hi fi all at the same time. Um, I can also hear doubling. If we go much further on into the song, uh, listen to this. You can hear there definitely two guitars playing at the same time. And now I think that he starts the song playing both of those guitars at the same time, because as it goes on, they're not drop-ins. You hear one one guitar depart from the other. So one stays with the riff, one plays like a counter melody. Also, if you listen to the beginning, there's reverb on the first couple of times round and then it goes away. Listen. Did you hear that reverb in that gap then? We carry on. There it goes. Dry as a bone now. But you can still hear the doubling and you can still hear the room. So they've recorded the sound of the room around it and then they've added a uh, reverb to the intro just to make the intro more interesting on the record. And then they get it out of the way. You don't want reverb muddying up your mix. So the whole song is the same sound there's reverb on the beginning but from then on it's dead dry and uh that's it for the whole song one sound brilliant it is a genius riff i'm sick of playing it but it is genius so this is mark's tone and this is my tone not too different So that's where I landed up. Um, it's pretty close, I think. Um, but it's been torture getting there. So let me take you on the ride. Let me take you on a journey into uh, how we got here. Because you you're learn you going to learn a lot about the head rush on this song. It's, uh, it's a good one to have picked. Well done, Jean-Marc. I hate you. Right. So let's go back in time. Or forward in time. There we are. Back in time. This is where I started. I started with a Marshall and a cab. 
Uh, I should mention that the guitar is on the neck pickup. The, the tone control is rolled all the way off, which sounds counterintuitive for that sound, but here we are. That's the bass sound. You can hear the, 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 the germ of it is in there. So then I had to pick a wah-wah. Now in the head rush, we've got three wah-wahs. We've got a Vox uh, called the Shine Wah. We've got the Crybaby, they call that the Black Wah. And we've got a Morley, which they call the More Wah. And when I first bought the head rush, I thought, oh, great, they've put a More Wah in it. It's got more of everything, more cue, more resonance, maybe some distortion. No, got ahead of myself. It's just a Morley Wah. So we had to pick between them. I usually default to the Crybaby. Um, so what I did here is I put the three wires on and I put them all at halfway. So each one of them is on 50%. Now, that's the crybaby. That's without anything. That's the crybaby halfway on. This is the Morley. Not too different. This is the Vox. So there's our clear winner. It's got that, that nasalness that the actual sound has got. So all we needed to do was then find where. And I liked it there, 67-ish. Now, if we were lazy, that would be the sound. But you listen to the original again, we're miles away. There's something going on. Mark's crazy wah. But having said that, you know, if you were in a covers band, that would do it on its own. But we have to move on. We're, we're moving on. Uh, so what I did was I started off adding the air filter. which gave us that um, more nasal. That's the modification to the wah-wah. Now I've had this everywhere. It, it, this sound is so interactive. If you adjust the filter, if you adjust the tone on your guitar, if you adjust the, the wah position, the tone on the amp, the, uh, the position of the mic on the cab, everything affects everything. So you'll find that frequency as we move on, skips all over the place, as does the resonance, as does the fatness. But this was this was where I started. So it's sort of got something of the, the sound in it. Then I added a graphic to take make it more peaky, but it was still fairly flat. Then uh, this is where I started to really get into it. I could hear that doubling on the recording. So I put the doubler in and I can hear the two reverbs. So I put a a big reverb on it and then when I change to that one it's just the room so but it, it's something the original has got a different kind of room and you hear it's like a cellar rather than a room so then I tried getting rid of the uh, reverb and I tried doubling It added something and I kind of liked it, but we still don't sound exactly like the record, do we? Listen. The doubler also gives it that weird chorusing. His sound is still, it's more distorted and less distorted, as stupid as that sounds, all at the same time. So then I moved on again. Now I discovered that the parametric EQ was good for this song because you you could pull up certain frequencies and make it more nasal so i was look out i've got 16 db of gain at 1200 hertz that's crazy see but it does give it that nasal thing once again two sizes of reverb That's a bit more like the room now. But I still wasn't happy. So the next day we had another go. Uh, 
That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Until you play the original. More harmonic than mine. And we've grown a compressor. Why did we grow a compressor? Because Mark's got a very even playing style and I'm a bit peaky. So I just put the compressor in for two reasons, to, to even out the peaks and troughs and to drive the amp a little bit because uh, the Marshall, I discovered, was a much grainier distortion, uh, the Marshall's in the head rush, than the one Mark's using. And that's probably due to the doubling because he's using two amps at the same time. The of the distortion, the little peaks are filling e in each other's gaps. So you're getting a more, right? <laughs> this is technical, isn't it? So instead of, you're getting, and that's what's happening. Um, so I couldn't get the Marshall in the uh, head rush to be as smooth as his. It's not bad. But then you compare. He's got more body. He's got more bite. Having said that, I'd use that live. Um, then we moved on to this one. So I've added the white boost. That's in the attempt to smooth out the distortion a little bit to get it uh, closer to marks. And I'm still... Um, trying to get the room sound with the just the reverb. Then, yesterday, I had a brainwave. I'm looking for doubling. I've tried the doubler. I've tried the uh, the room of the reverb. I've even tried a delay. I didn't save this read, but I tried a delay with an incredibly fast slap on it, and that didn't work. But then I suddenly thought, in the mix section of the head rush, there's a delay. You can delay... This bit you can delay the two paths through the head rush one to the other and lo and behold that was the key suddenly we've got the doubling sound and the uh, reverb and the small reverb by using the delay in the mix now that delay is interesting. Oh, I also, before we get on to the delay, I also decided to use a Marshall and a Soldano just in an attempt at smoothing out that distortion. Um, so let's talk you through this rig before we get to the mix section because everything changed on this rig. So we started with the compressor this time rather than having it in the chain. It is set fairly aggressively. It's quite a lot of gain, 5 dB of gain. But it's only 2 to 1, so it's not, you know doing a lot but it is doing it in front of the amp so it's pushing the amp slightly then we've got the shine wire set as we decided 66 67 ish then the air filter now i've been arguing with myself for days over this air filter it does add the harmonic can you hear that there's a little thing going on if i turn it off you'll hear So without, with, it's adding that little harmonic edge to the sound. The frequency anywhere from high threes to sevens works. Um, I've only got the mix at 20% because it doesn't need much. You listen, I'll take it out with the, with that. That's without. So it's just putting the the very, very, very nasal quality. I'm guessing that's what the, the knob on the side of Mark's Wawa is doing. It's adding that nasal business. So that's the uh, the mod to the Wawa. Then we've got two amps, a Marshall and a Soldano, as I said. If I turn off the Soldano side completely. So now this is just the Marshall side. There's, a, there's an energy missing. If I do the reverse, if I turn off the Marshall side and turn on the Soldano side. Mm -hmm. 
it's got a bit more energy, but the definition is missing. So we land up with them both. Which is good. The IR, I, um, I went for the Celestian IRs that come with your head rush. So you should have these IRs if you load this rig. Um, I spent ages scrolling up and down finding which ones I liked best. Here's a, here's a good tip. If you go into the, um, the folder, so go into the Celestian folder and then uh, find the one you like. If you leave it highlighted in green, you can play and you can turn the big main knob and just scroll through them till you find the one you like. It saves a lot of messing about. Um, so I use different ones on each side, but they're both Celestians. Uh, I used a high gain one on the Soldana. Um, they're IRs, you know, you just find the one you like. There's millions of them. We've all got millions of them. We only need one of them, but there you go. Uh, and then the graphics. The graphics are doing loads to this sound. Listen without. Muffly, muffly, muffly. Um, because this is a studio recording, this isolated track is the actual stem from the recording. And when you record, you roll off all the bottom end of a guitar because you don't want it muddying the mix up. You can never hear it in the mix. So these two graphics are quite extreme. I've got them set like this. Here's, if this was a pedal, a real pedal, this is how it's set. Um, as you can see, uh, extreme bass roll off and some top. But that's the key to this sound. There it is. And then finally, the reverb. So the reverb is set for the intro like that. You just hear the uh, little bloom around it like that. Then when we get into the song, very dry. So the doubling, as I was talking about, I got sidetracked talking you through the rig, but here's the, here's the key. In the mix, we've got this delay. If I turn the delay all the way off, delay goes both ways. So you can have A in front of B or B in front of A, and I just turned it too far the wrong way. Right, so that's the delay off. Let's turn the reverb off as well. So this is the sound completely dry with no delay. You hear how flat it sounds? It's not in Mark's room. We go into the mix control. Sorry, I've only got two arms. So here we go. So that's with just a little bit of delay. Here, we're already in a room now. We're in we're in some kind of space because we've separated these two in time. This one is 720 whatever us's are away from that one. And as we go more, yeah, I know they're not called us's pedants out there. I know that. That was a joke. But uh, as we separate it more, here, It goes all the way to there, which is too much. But doesn't that sound like a room? Um, I figured out, well, I liked it somewhere around 12, 13. That's put the room on it. Now we add the reverb back. So the intro reverb, whoa, bad plank. The intro. And you can hear the, then we switch to the other size. And that's where we are. The mix control, who knew that it would be so um, powerful? Now also in the mix control, I've dropped the level 
of both sides a little tiny bit because what I discovered was if I left them at full tilt, the sound something is pushing something in there and it's just a little bit too aggressive so that landed up coming off if i was playing this live i would probably leave it on the zero but as i'm trying to replicate the record this is where i landed up i put the pans on 50 left 50 right so if you were looking at a clock where it's sort of 10 to 2 with the uh, the panning um obviously you can mono it up by leaving everything in the middle um, but then you lose the lovely width surprisingly it's not bad though it's all right um so that's the sound i'll put all of these rigs bundled together there's five of them so that you can uh, fiddle about i also discovered what guitar you use makes a huge difference I started off with my Gibson SG because that's as close as I've got to a Les Paul. And what I'm playing at the moment, it's a Washburn. It's called a Force 6 from the 80s. It's got a tremolo arm and everything. Uh, it's a, a flat fronted strat with humbuckers in it, essentially. Um, but the pickups aren't as hot as my SGs and it works better. Um, for me, obviously your guitar is going to be different, so the rig will sound different for you. But by tweaking the graphics, playing with the air filter, you'll be able to get the money for nothing sound on the record with this. Um, like I say, the other ones I've put in um, will... Oh, all right. Discard changes. The others I've put in will probably work better live, to be honest. And they're more full featured. They've got business on the buttons. This main rig only has the reverb size. See, it doesn't work as good with this guitar. That's That one's better with the SG. There's so many variables. But that's where we are. And that's where I'm leaving it. Because I never want to hear this song again. Uh, so if you would like to suggest an annoying guitar tone for me to have a bash at. Uh, I'm more than happy to do so. Um, and it will contribute to my mental downfall so i've been mucking around with my head rush you've been wasting time with me see you again bye now take it away mark <laughs>